So the morning I started, I left my parents' caravan and drove down to the beach. It was a lovely day, it was nice sunny. It was the first day where it was actually getting into the summer. Mm -hmm. And you've been surfing um, a long time. Yeah, I started about four years ago. Yeah. Um, I lived in France for a while where I started and then um, I just continued from there back up in Scotland. So very quickly, I mean, 10 minutes into being out on the sea, you, you knew that something was, was wrong. Yeah, the beach where I was surfing, there's a large hill um, that shields the wind when you're on the beach. So I didn't actually feel the wind until, until I was out. in the sea. And by that point, the wind was keeping me out yeah. from the coast. So it was pushing me out constantly. So you were desperately trying to paddle towards the shore and, uh, and thwarted by the currents. Yeah, initially I thought I was getting caught in a riptide. So I started paddling south to the next wave section. Um, it was then when I realised it was the wind mm. that was holding me out. So then I decided to paddle south towards Makrahanish, which was about three miles. So you can see the beach. At one point you're looking, hoping that yeah. there's going to be somebody on there that you can wave to, get some attention for them to rescue you, and you're drifting further and further out. I mean, when did that sort of dread kick in where you knew you were in serious trouble here? Um, well, initially when I started waving for help and realising no one was there, yeah. I saw some people walking a dog, but they weren't looking out to see anyone. So I started to panic a little bit there. Um, but I had a plan to paddle south to hit the coast before I went any further out west. Mm. And the current was carrying me down southwards. But the tide then changed and carried me all the way back up north. When that tide changed and I realised I wasn't moving, yeah. that's when it started to really sink in. Well, then, then you are further and further away with a b vague hope that maybe uh, you're going to drift into some fishing lanes or something like that, someone to find you. Yeah. But 32 hours you are on that board. Um, you must have thought, I'm done here. Yeah, so it was, it started to really sink in as sun was setting. So I got drifted all the way back up north, started drifting south again because the tide changed again. This was maybe after about 11 hours of being in the water and the sun had set by that point. So I'm sitting in the dark. I can see the town on the coast, Makrahanish. I can see two lighthouses and then the town lights turn off, they turn off at about 2 a.m. So then I'm sitting in the water with a few lighthouses blinking. They blink four times, then they stop for about five seconds, then they blink four times. Oh my gosh, you must have been counting each and every one. And yeah. freezing cold waters, you're dehydrated as well mm -hmm. by this point, and you hallucinated. Yeah, so that was close, that was in the second day that yeah. happened. So um, it got into the afternoon, I saw a helicopter during the day. Um, but it was searching miles away from where I was. And then later on, I could hear chopping of a helicopter. I looked up and thought I could see a helicopter. So okay. then I start waving. And then my vision resolved and it's a seagull. Oh, God, so then, poor thing. Then you start to think, did I see the helicopter at all? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. first time, so. And uh, how did you feel when you really did see the helicopter? Um, did you believe so, it? No. Um, <laughs> At first, because I could hear the chopping in the air, I just assumed it was my mind playing tricks again. Mm -hmm. So I started to look up and I could see the helicopter coming towards me. And they flew over, directly over where I was. So I leaned back on the board to try and make like a yellow triangle to try and you know get them to see it. But then they just continued straight on oh, for God. about 10 seconds. In that 10 seconds, it's just dread because a helicopter just flew directly above me oh. and, and has missed me. Well, I mean, this is a, it was a massive search and rescue operation. Uh, RNLI, RNLI lifeboats from Campbelltown, Isla, Red Bay, Coast Guard rescues from Campbelltown, Southend, Giga, Tarbert, Port Ellen, uh, Coast Guard rescue helicopters based at Presswick. I mean, this, this was a, 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 a massive undertaking. And thank goodness we have those facilities available to us in times like this, otherwise you'd be, you'd be dead. Mm -hmm. um, did you get the proper chance to say thank you to the, to the guys? Um, not the crew on the helicopter. Um, I've still to meet them and I really do want to do that. Um, but I did visit the Belfast Banger Coast yeah. Guard Station. So you never, you haven't been able to thank the guys in the helicopter? No, no, I thanked them on the helicopter, right. but I've not, not met them since. Sense. Would yeah. you like to? Oh, I'd love to. Would you? Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> More than welcome. How yeah. lucky was he, Andy? Um, uh, very lucky, yeah. 
I, I think when we were given the tasking initially, he'd been missing for 27 hours at that point, and out at sea over that period of time, you end up with a huge search area. Yeah. And it's, it's a small target to look for one person and one surfboard, so. And Faraz, it was you that spotted this unusual shape in the water, because actually when you were up there, there's lots of, there's lots floating around on the sea, so... Well, China... not so much. The fish was good, mm -hmm. and the creatures were fine, but... Uh, it's still uneasy to spot something. Yeah. But I saw some pointed things sticking out. He actually held the surfboard up. Yeah. And at that uh, moment, I thought, that's weird, it's strange. Yeah. So we all discussed it and we turned around and then we, uh, we found him. Yeah. Thank goodness. And Rob, are you the winchman? Winch operator. You're a winch operator. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so, Duncan, you're the, you're the winchman. So between the two of you, you've got to coordinate getting down there and getting him back yeah. on board. Yeah. And so how easy is that? What was the weather like? Um, pretty good sea conditions, it wasn't a massive swell, yeah. um, so it's, it's relatively straightforward, it's something we train to do and something we do quite regularly. Mm -hmm. And um, when you got down there, what, uh, what did you say to each other? Um, I think as we came towards each other, give a kind of a question, thumbs up, he kind of, yeah, I'm happy. And when I got to him, um, we kind of just went through a standard procedure to get him up to the aircraft, but we had a bit of a, a, bit of a moment, probably non-standard, we had a bit of a man hug in the water, ah. which is a bit surreal. <laughs> and I think he was, uh, he was quite, uh, quite pleased uh, to see us. Yes, yeah. that's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.